was cute, dude. Two years, one million Japanese disappear. Huh? China's population will... Wait, what? Every two years, one million Japanese disappear. China's population will halve by the end of the century. The median age in Italy has reached 48. All around the world, birth rates are crashing. Is humanity dying out? What's going on? And how bad is it? Guys, I heard about that in the chat. Is that, yes, I heard about that in the chat. Wouldn't it be good, chat, for your children's children to short the housing market globally? Because there's less people, less people, that the, the markets of the houses are gonna, is gonna go down because there's gonna be a surplus of houses and not able to, 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 to be in the houses, right? If it's gonna crash, if you go all in, or at least have your money, in, into shorting the global housing market, then whenever you have children, like in like a hundred years, they're gonna have like one gazillion dollars. For hundreds of thousands of years, the human population barely grew at all, haunted by disease, famine, and war until the Industrial Revolution. Exponential progress led to exponential growth, pushing our numbers to six billion in the year 1999 and eight billion just 24 years later. And our numbers will continue to rise for at least another 60 years, but this growth obscures something. People kind of stopped having babies. For a stable population, the every couple needs to have two children on average. If the number is higher, it grows. If lower, it shrinks. If it's well below, it shrinks a lot and quickly. Because like people are on Korea, the grind. One of the hottest exporters of pop culture. Its fertility rate lay at 0.8 children per woman in 2022, the lowest in the world. This means Guys, people can't afford to house. Yo, people can't afford shit. Here's my thing. People can't afford anything. Everything's too expensive, right? Um, uh, uh, there's less traditional values, I think, around like, like, like getting children and being like a housewife. There, there's less wives, less mothers, people that want motherhood or whatever, and people want to have a career of their own. You know what? I'm okay with that. Fuck it, dude. Means 100 South Koreans of childbearing age today will have 40 kids, who then will have 16 kids, who then will have six. If nothing changes, then within 100 years, there will be 94% fewer young people, and South Korea will see a population. Wait, what? Hold on, doesn't. 16 kids, who then will have six. If nothing changes, then within 100 years, there will be 94% fewer young people, and South Korea will see a population implosion. That is, if things stay the same. We have yet to see if there's a bottom to fertility rates. So chat, Although looking at how do you go onto the market and short a country? Chat, guys, what if I were to short South Korea in time? I short the GDP. I short that shit right now. At the bigger picture and absolute numbers, this population will not shrink that much. It simply returns to the level it once was. In 1950, there were 20 million South Koreans. In 2023, there are 52 million, and by 2100, there will be 24 million again. But the issue is not that there will be fewer South Koreans, the issue is the composition of the population. In 1950, the median age was 18. In 2023, it's 45. In 2100, it will be 59. A country of seniors. And South Korea is far from alone. What? China may be seeing the steepest population reversal in history, unstoppable at this point. Rapid industrialization, urbanization, and rising incomes meant that the Chinese started to prefer smaller families. That, plus the introduction of the one child wait, policy, wait. which aims yeah, to slow yeah, as I said, I don't think they prefer it, to be honest. Population growth means that China has had a low fertility rate for decades. With a fertility rate of 1.16 births per woman, within four generations, 100 young Chinese will turn into 20. China's fertility rates are now one of the lowest in East Asia, lower than even Japan's. In comparison, Europe's depopulation is much slower, despite low fertility, since unlike Asia, most states have had a steady flow of immigrants. The impact is complex, as a good chunk of immigrants come from other low fertility rate areas. The number of immigrant women who do have a lot of children is not yet high enough to make a big dent, and fertility rates of immigrants tend to adjust to the native population within two to three generations. In Eastern Europe, yeah, the decline has sped up even more because many young people have emigrated to stronger no, economies like actually, yeah. Germany, whose median age is one of the highest in the world at 46. Latin America fell below replacement in 2015. 
In the US, immigration is the only thing keeping the population growing substantially. There are still places where fertility rates have not fallen below replacement yet. In much of the Middle East, North and Sub-Saharan Africa, fertility is still high, which creates the same concerns about overpopulation as when Asia grew very quickly in the 1950s, but that turned out which to be is unfounded. What? But recently, the UN has reduced its forecast for Africa's population drastically. For Nigeria, estimates were lowered from 733 million to 546 million by 2100. That's 100. Similar are being noted across the continent. As Africa develops, fertility rates are shrinking much faster than anticipated. It's becoming more likely that East Asia's story will repeat itself. By the end of the century, most places in Yo, Africa okay, may I, be- I, I'm gonna say, check, guys, guys, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a corporate moment chat. 2070, 2040, 2100. Bro, I don't even know if I'm gonna make it, make it to fucking 2024, bro. I'm, I can't worry about this shit, man. No I, I don't wanna give a too. fuck. So declining birth rates and aging know, populations have ass, become a general bitch. trend all over the world. Why is all of this a big deal? Demographics yeah, why is it a big deal? and poverty. For a functioning society, you need enough people in the prime of their lives. Young and middle-aged people do most of the work. In any economic system, working-age people create a society's wealth. In retirement, you stop contributing as much to the economy. But the majority of healthcare costs are generated by seniors. The way the world worked in the past was that a lot of younger people took care of a few older people. Imagine a society where most people are older than 60. The financial burden for the young will be immense, unsustainable, even for the richest countries. Even in the best case, this will mean people having to work way longer, exploding healthcare costs and poverty, while states dude, with shrinking dude. income struggle to keep up with- Chat, elderly care is already a fucking disaster, dude. Don't, chat, don't we have, don't have enough to, to, to house and care for all the old people? A lot of them get like undercared in, in facilities. How are they going to adapt with that in a way that's not going to be wasteful for the future? Rising costs. Technology might it's a good question the blow, that I don't give a fuck about. compensate entirely. We can see this happening already. 11 out of 31 provinces in China are running deficits for their pension funds. They got old before they got rich, and now they can't really catch up anymore. China's working age population is predicted to fall by 20% or 200 million people by 2050, as much as today's entire working age population of the US. Infrastructure collapse is an almost universal constant of population decline, because infrastructure works at scale and doesn't get cheaper to operate if it's used by fewer people. If a population declines, be it because of urbanization or the loss of industry and employment, once people and their income disappear, the resources necessary to sustain infrastructure disappear too. You can see it in many depopulated towns and cities in East Germany that suffered sharp population decline after German reunification. Um, or look at Japan. You can tour the countryside to see dying towns. Wait, if there are few people, won't life get cheaper and better and there'll be more resources to go around? Well, no. Population oh, no. decline doesn't lead to prosperity. It's people's ideas and work that create our prosperity, not the mere availability of resources. Uh. Another danger for aging societies is that elected governments could decide to mostly represent the interests and fears of their elderly populations, potentially leading to short-term thinking and a preference for conserving wealth over innovation. Ja That's not that a society makes that sense, can handle actually. issues like climate change, which need massive investment and fresh ideas, something the world is already having a hard time with. Chat, ja, ja, do you actually think that people that are dying and all the spies are like, you have like, you have like 20 years to live, bro? Give a shit about about the uh, about the future and whatnot, and you know, they probably don't give a fuck about all. Many like, people think that having fewer humans on Earth is actually a good thing because our societies are too unsustainable. We're using up too many resources, and because of climate change. The problem is that even if you want fewer humans, this process is very likely too slow to have a positive impact on the environment. The world population is going to grow for at least 60 more years before it may shrink again. This is why democracy fucking sucks, man. Voting and shit, what a joke, dude. Why don't we just fucking, why don't we just do like a fucking BR, dude? Like, did whoever, dude, like a, like, did a battle royale some shit. Why then, like, we have to dude, solve climate change. I think, Likewise, I think, any other right? upside to like, like a Chad thing. Have, will most likely not materialize themselves this century. So just like import people, the easiest solution seems to be immigration, but the fertility of immigrants adjusts to local levels within three generations. So you need a constant influx of new migrants, which is not sustainable long-term as birth rates are dropping everywhere. 
The only way would be to keep poor countries poor so that the young and motivated migrate to developed countries looking for opportunity Wait. and a better life. Kind of an immoral thing to wish for. By the end of the- So if you want your country to win the, 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 the massive global race, right? To, 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 to money? Fuck it. You open the floodgates for immigration. Everybody yoinks in, but there's an age limit, right? Age limit. And you get all the young people in, that, and, and now they get all the jobs, whatever. And everybody's all old and dying. Nobody's making anything, they're taking any jobs. And boom, you're out here stacking cash. The like century, hard Africa cold will cash. have the highest number of young people in the world, and so African migrants will become why. the world's you most sought after me. immigrants, with elderly nations fighting hard for every person willing to make the move. Immigration can also create societal or cultural mm. tensions, which is a universal phenomenon in all cultures, especially when cultures with very different sets of values meet, often leading to a backlash that slows immigration down again. It's easy to be frustrated at this, but ignoring this will only chat. divide societies, empower- Chat, imagine chat, debate, me and Justin Trudeau, dude, right? And I did the fucking worm, dude, on the fucking global stage. That's hardcore. and I am done xenophobia. Economically, immigration is largely beneficial for societies, even if this seems counterintuitive to many people. Especially countries like winner. the US, an and immigrant nation the thing, built yeah. on the idea of personal freedom and opportunity through hard work will benefit the most. Countries like this will have a clear advantage this century, especially if they can attract the world's brightest and most ambitious. Conclusion what? and our opinion. This topic is way too big, affects societies as diverse as literally all of humanity. So please take this part with a gigantic grain of salt. Obviously, we're looking at this from our Central European perspective. One way to look at falling birth rates is as a side effect of the world being less bad than it was. Especially women are freer, more educated, and wealthier than in the past. But it turns out that if societies are better off, individuals often decide to have fewer kids. Interestingly, there's a gap between how many kids people want and how many they're having. The mean number of kids women in Europe want is around 2.3, much more than they're actually having. While we gained a lot of freedoms in the- Chat, is that a problem or bad? Is that- is the chat- what are your thoughts about that chat? Is that a problem or not a problem? Last century, across continents and economic systems, that came at a cost. The tight-knit communities and family structures that were part of our nature, where kids could be brought up by a village. I think the grind got too hardcore because of the cost and inflation for the dudes, which led which led a lot of problems at home. And then and then they and then and it feels like the fabric of the of the of the ha household fell apart, so that so that the girls don't want to fucking clutch up and and and, and go way beyond it. Now they have to work and do all the house stuff and whatever. But, and now they're like, yeah, fuck it. I'm just gonna do the same thing then. And that, boom. They, now I know what I'm talking about. I'm just talking. With different challenges and societal expectations. Women are kind of ground down Think between the wish and expectation to have a family and a career, being pressured to do both, but not compromise either. Men are sharing parental duties more equally than they used to, but are often still expected to be the provider. And it's sadly true that usually at least one parent's career is held back. In many developed countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just said it. The gender pay gap is chiefly a pay gap between mothers and everyone else. But it's not just outside pressure. Our culture of individualism probably plays a role too. Well, I mean, dude. We have only one life to exp I mean, dude, dude. If you spend the majority of your adulthood raising a child and doing, doing mother, uh, motherhood activities, you probably have less time to gain experience and knowledge about certain, certain fields. So, whenever, whenever you're coming in, you're at a massive disadvantage. You're at a massive disadvantage. For sure. Or be free, travel, have fun, accomplish something, and try to be happy. So people commit to partners later in life and often decide against so said, right? families oh, okay. or any at all. And that's fair. Nobody owes their country babies. So far, no country has successfully managed to increase birth rates significantly. So as of now, we don't really you know, know what Last works. pause, last pause. But here you know what, chat? Yes, I, feel, I, feel like, I feel like having a family and, and, and whatever, and the chance of the family staying stable and really making it fulfill, like being fulfilled in in the in the family building, I think that's like a, a dead dream. That's that's my thoughts. Like I just generally feel like like something's gonna happen. Like divorce will happen. Um, um stuff, stuff at work and ex, and ex, and costs is not gonna work out, and it's end up like breaking apart. And that the dream is dead, yo. That, that's I think I think the dream is dead. Here are a few options to at least make the lives of parents much easier. 
free and abundant access to childcare, financial benefits for parents, more and cheaper housing. Parenthood has to stop being a career obstacle and our culture needs to become more positive towards families. And that's something we can all work on. The next time you sit next to a crying baby, don't be a jerk about it. Kids are hard. In the end, humanity will not die out because we're having fewer babies. The age and composition of our societies changes quickly and we need to deal with that sooner rather than later. But in the end, of all the incredibly hard challenges we've faced before, why would this be the one we can't solve? Um, to the bottom of the population crash. I think we're getting to a fucking global cr cr uh, crunch. There's a bunch of massive problems are all gonna come at once. That's my thought. I think it's about to go. Starts with analyzing and interpreting massive amounts of data. And if you're looking for a free way to start building your data skills, which are more essential than ever these days, we recommend Brilliant.org. Brilliant's latest course okay. predicting with probability will teach you everything you need to get started in data science. No coding required. Your bizarre video and in the chat, Pog Championship. Compare distributions and master fundamental concepts that are key to some of the most in demand careers. I enjoyed in today's that. It was a good world. video. Beyond data, Brilliant is the chat. best way to master chat. key concepts.